Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And what do we have here we're looking at? Recycled goods. And today we're going to show you how to turn your recyclables into something useful instead of throwing them out. And that will be on today's video. Stay tuned. Recycled goods that are in your home that you have on a daily basis that you can turn around and reuse them instead of throwing them out or recycling them. Um, I do know uh, there's quite a few places and towns and stuff that have started uh, stopping recycling um, because uh, they have nobody to buy it and it's not cost effective. So now they're throwing all this stuff into the dump and burying it, which will take thousands of years to disintegrate. You know, a lot of this stuff isn't biodegradable. So today we're gonna to show you how to do some of these things. And uh, I can make up some little kits and stuff that you can put into your backpacks or maybe even use in your, you know, your house on a, a daily basis. So we're gonna get this video going and here we go. First little project we're going to be doing here, um, we're going to be using, you know, some of your old aluminum foil rolls, you know, your heavy duty aluminum foil rolls, I mean, you know, the real thick cardboard, we're going to be using these, and your regular aluminum foil, and what you'll need is some way to try to make sure that you cut these, Now I pre-did this one here, so you get the idea. You want to make sure that you can cut that, you know, um, and get a nice clean cut, uh, somewhat even. You can measure it out if you want, if you want it exact. Um, but, you know, you don't want to damage the end when you cut it, you know, when you're cutting. Because these two pieces went together. So what I did was, is I got out the trusty old hacksaw, and you can saw them right in half, and you get a nice smooth edge, and it's not crushed or anything else. Now... What we're going to do with that afterwards is we're going to, on this roll, will be um, three different types of tapes. We have our electrical tape, we have our regular gray tape, this is just grizzly uh, gray tape, it, it's not like it's uh, super strong, but it is duct tape, and then this is a 3M that's a lot stronger. Um, you know, maybe for different situations and stuff. And we're gonna put this onto here and wrap these around so we have maybe an accurate an, enough supply of the three different types on one piece, which I will show you here in one second. Okay, so as you can see, I've took the three different tapes and I've rolled them out onto the tube. Now I have my heavy duty, I have my regular duct tape, and I have my electrical tape. And it's on a nice, sturdy, solid, you know, piece of cardboard tube that the aluminum foil is wrapped, it comes wrapped around. Now, you know, you say, oh, what were you going to you gonna do with these? Well, you can put them in your pack. You can put them in your emergency pack that you carry in your car. Um, you know, you never know. Uh, if Say, you, you, you know, one of your hoses on your, your engine or whatever start leaking or whatever, and you use some of your, your, your you know, real good duct tape here and uh, you can wrap that up really good I probably put about between two and three feet of each one on here um, as you can see it doesn't take up a lot of space it doesn't weigh anything um, but you know you could have these in your your emergency pack for your car or you could have them in your backpack it'd be great if you had to uh, patch a tarp um, I mean, if you had to, if you didn't have much for emergency supplies, you could use it to um, uh, take and uh, uh, help cover up a wound. 
um, fix a tarp, a tent, um, you know, those, those type of things, you know, just kind of a little handy. But I'm going to show you a little trick that I'm going to do with these um, at the end. So that is on our electrical tape. Next, we're going to take our, our next one here and we're going to put uh, some string on here and some fishing line. And we'll show you that in just a minute. So what we did was, all this kind of stuff takes a little bit of time. You can measure out as much as you want. You know, I, obviously you don't want to get it too bulky. Um, I took it and stretched it out three times, you know, so um, it's probably about nine feet, maybe a little bit less. Um, but I got cordage on here, you know, some really good cordage, number 36. Um, I put on some, just some regular old, you know, twine, um, you know, for like the lighter things. You use this for, you know, your heavier, uh, your heavier jobs that you needed to do or to really hold to secure. And at the very end, I put on some good old fishing line. Now on that, I just kept going and going and going. So you, there's plenty of fishing line on there that you could, you know, you could use in a survival type scenario where if you needed, um, and you know, so you could just make little hacks like these and you could take and put them in, like I said, in your backpack, in your, in your pack that you your emergency pack that you have that you travel with. Um, but we're going to do some more. So as you can see, we have completed two of these, uh, tubes that we cut in half from just the one little aluminum foil. So we saved a little bit of this, um, uh, I guess you could, if you wanted to, you could rip this and kind of roll it down in here. Uh, if you needed like a little fire starter, um, <clears throat> this little metal edge, if you can get it off, that might come in handy for something. Uh, if you needed to, to try to slice something, but I'd be very careful with that. Um, <clears throat> cause those things can slice your fingers pretty good. So as you can see, we, we did the, the twine. Uh, I got the regular twine. I got some bank line, I got fishing line, uh, all on this one here. And you're probably all wondering, why is there this orange looking, you know, string on there? Well, this way here, um, <clears throat> if you're out in the woods, because uh, you're notorious uh, when, when you're out camping. Camping, hiking, uh, survival, it doesn't, it all goes right along with each other here. Um, basically... You know, this way here, if you set this down on the ground and you're working with something over here and you turn back around and then you're notorious for uh, where to go. Now you're searching for it. And if you turn around and it's got like a bright orange or a bright neon green, um, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. And especially if it's nighttime and if you drop this and you come back with your flashlight, you're going to see that a lot quicker than you're going to see any other colors on here, especially on the tape. Um, so that's one little hack that we can use with these rolls and, you know, and try to save the environment a little bit. Uh, probably both these way, huh, uh, maybe an, if you're lucky an ounce, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's nothing to them. They don't take up much room. Uh, like I said, you can put these into your, uh, your regular backpacks, your hiking backpacks, uh, your backpack for your car in, in case of emergency. Um, you know, if you needed to, your tailpipe comes loose or something, uh, and you need to tie it up, or you know, you blow a water hose and you need to tape it up or something, well, guess what? You got something to do it with. I mean, hopefully, you can get back on the road and you don't have to call for a tow truck or something. All these goods that you see right here for this project that we just did right here, um, I got uh, um, these two tapes I got from Amazon. Um, this one here I got from Walmart. The fishing line came from Walmart. Just the regular, um, basically string, you know, tie. Uh, that was from Walmart. And my bank line 36 I got from Amazon because that's one of the cheapest places I found to uh, uh, buy it. Uh, <clears throat> you can take and you can utilize the inside of these. Uh, if you wanted to and cap this off with if you, if you had tape or if you take uh, some cotton swabs or something to shove in there now I uh, do uh, realize that you know, these are not waterproof. They are cardboard So if they do get wet, you know, they may get ruined, but um, you know what? I mean chances are the next time you have some loom foil You can just make another one, you know, 
doesn't take that long to do and you're saving the environment while you are doing it um, so the next thing we're going to move on to after this is we're going to talk a little bit about some um, plastic stuff here so we'll be right back to demonstrate to you what I'm talking about here I just take my hacksaw I know roughly where I want to cut on my part give you a demonstration like I said they don't have to be exactly even um, <clears throat> about the same width very simple to do you could cut it into different sections if you wanted to do you know four out of the big tube it's all on whatever you want to do but that's how you do that so on this tube what we're gonna do is we're gonna put there was a little bit of aluminum foil left on here on this one roll and we're gonna put this on here because you know if you had some aluminum foil in your uh, survival pack, uh, your camping, uh, hiking, whatever, uh, aluminum foil comes in handy for a lot of different things. And so we cut one of those tubes in half, all right, because we wanted to make it a little bit smaller. So all you have to do is put the tube down, get your piece of duct tape. You want to tape this first section down to hold it in place, just like so. And keep it snug and just roll your aluminum foil up. And as you can see, it's a pretty good sized piece of aluminum foil. This is the heavy duty, uh, really wide. wide. Um, I use this for my ribs when I smoke them in my smoker. Take and just roll it right up and then it's all up to you if you want to put a string around it or another little piece of tape right here to hold it but now you have quite a bit of aluminum foil on there you just saw how much I just rolled up on there and um, you know didn't take much you know once again we're recycling and reusing and uh, we know we all have to uh, pitch in together here um, we'll see what else we're going to come up with here. Right. As you can see, we're back and we have put our uh, regular twine, our bank line, and our fishing line all on one tube here. Um, <clears throat> now you could utilize these and uh, if you get you some hooks and uh, I would suggest maybe putting them inside maybe like a little sandwich bag or something and slide them down in here and then cap these two ends off with either uh, a stick, cotton swabs, um, cotton swabs would be good because then you also have a fire starter. Uh, so, you know, you could utilize the inside of these uh, if you had uh, a piece of fat wood and you'd split it down and put it inside, um, which would work great. And you're probably all wondering, uh, now you see orange on the rolls. Well, the reason I put the orange on there is because everybody is notorious, uh, whether you're camping, hiking, um, survival, whatever. If you're out in the woods and you're doing something, uh, everybody has done it. You take and you, you set something down and you, you, know, you put it over here and you turn around and you start working on something. You turn back around, especially with your knives. Um, <clears throat> my knife, my mower doesn't have uh, anywhere to tie you know like a hole to put anything through or that would have an orange on it also but this way here you can find it very easily then if it's dark and it's nighttime uh, you can also find that I am aware that you know these are cardboard so if they do get wet um, more than likely they will uh, eventually get ruined um, but <clears throat> to try uh, but to try to you know recycle you know and uh, reuse uh, what has already been made and uh, make it into something that's very lightweight you have plenty of 
Um, you have your tape, you have, you know, your electrical tape, duct tape, uh, you have rope cordage, uh, fishing line on two things that probably weigh less than an ounce and that you can still utilize the space inside to store whatever kind of products you'd like to put in there. Um, if people have some ideas, uh, uh, put it in the comments down below. Um, you know, I mean, you could, uh, uh, just about anything you could, as long as it'll fit down in there, you know, you can utilize that, that empty space. Um, if you wanted, you know, you run a, a nice rope through these and then you could maybe hook them on the back of your pack, uh, with a carabiner or something. Um, so that about does it for that there. Um, the tape and stuff, uh, the, the Grizzly and the 3M tape, I did get off Amazon as um, my, my uh, bank line 36, uh, just because it's the cheapest place I found to get it. Uh, my fishing line, the electrical tape, and the regular string here, uh, I did pick up at Walmart, you know, relatively cheap. Um, you know, if you break this down, I mean, these two little projects uh, probably cost you a couple bucks, you know, for what you're, what you're using here. Um, then you still have stuff for your house or your, you know, your emergency supply kit and in your home or in your vehicle. Um, but these are just a great idea just to throw into any size backpack. It doesn't have to be a large, huge backpack. If it's a day pack or anything like that, um, just to toss them in there, throw them in the very bottom, gives you a little bit of security. So next on the agenda, we're going to talk about some, uh, plastic products. Be right back. Now, as I said, we're going to be talking about some plastic goods. One thing I want to talk about, which is really cool, uh, I buy eggs, I get them at Walmart, uh, I get the cage free, okay, and they come in these cool little plastic containers. Now, these containers, when you open them up this way here, that is still sealed. There's another lid on the inside. So, this would be good for... Um, I would say for your hurricane preps too. Um, you could take, fill these full of water, put these in there, and then freeze them. They would stack really nice right inside of your freezer. Because right, that's something that you run into a problem with is when you're making ice and stuff. Uh, you know, sometimes if you use um, uh, like big containers, plastic containers and stuff, it doesn't always come out even. They don't stack nice once you take them out. And these, if you just stack them right in your freezer inside, um, they're there, they're ready to go, and you have pretty good size ice cubes. Now, another good thing you could use this for is uh, for your uh, emergency survival uh, kit. Um, not so much that you probably want to put this into a backpack. It might get crushed and it's not really that, that sturdy. But to have something to store supplies in, um, you could put some of your fire starters in here. Uh, you could do uh, your, some cotton balls, um, some of your fire tapes that you can buy, uh, shavings from your uh, fat wood. Um, if you had like birch bark or anything like that, you can put that in here and have it into your emergency supplies. Um, you could also throw in here, you could throw uh, nuts, bolts, and things of that nature. Um, it would be good like out in the garage. So you could take and fill these full of your nuts and bolts and... Um, washers and then when you put this on here and you seal this up you can stack it really nice and you can see what is right inside you know so these things this would come in really handy for a lot of different ideas uh there's so many things that you could do with this uh if somebody else has some ideas uh throw it in the comments down below um and uh we can get a discussion on it uh, another another good thing is uh you know your gatorade bottles you know this size or the smaller ones next down. Um, you know, you can use these to fill up and store water in. Um, you could also store other things in these if you had to, uh, especially with the smaller ones. Uh, would be good if you needed uh, like <clears throat> some kerosene uh, for emergency type situation. If you can't carry a whole can of kerosene, but if you could fill up a smaller version of the, um, the Gatorade bottles or what, they're real thick plastic. They seal really good, and um, if you're worried about you know leaking or something, you could always put a piece of plastic over the top of this, and then screw the lid down nice and tight, and you could put that into your backpack if you had like a small little um, kerosene stove, or to help maybe get a fire or something going. 
Um, you can also take these and freeze them uh, for uh, emergency supply if you're worried about your power going out, say like with a hurricane. Uh, do not fill them all the way up to the top. I would only fill them up like this one here to this brim right here because the water does expand when it is being frozen. Uh, another thing you could do is with a different size between these and say like a regular water bottle, um, <clears throat> you can take and drill a nice hole in the top of these uh, depending on the size of rope that you want to store. Um, and then you can put your rope and put that down inside of here and then run your rope up through your lid, through the hole that you make, and then your rope would be right there and it'd be contained inside here and it'd stay nice and dry for you. Um, you could do it with either size bottle, uh, just depending on what size of rope or cordage that you wanted to use. Um, another thing, uh, Maxwell House, any type of these plastic coffee containers. I save these. Um, I use a lot of them for when I'm cooking and stuff, for grease and stuff like that, uh, to dispose of. Um, but, you know, they do seal really well. You know, you have a very big opening. You can store, um, you can store rope, you know, your rope, your cordage. You can get a roll of duct tape down in here. Um, you can put your, your, you put that on there and it seals nice, warm and dry. And you can stick it on a shelf, uh, emergency situation. If you just grab one of these or something, had this close by or whatever, you, you could take and uh, you have some, a lot of supplies with you, more than what you have on your uh, cardboard tubes here. Um, you can also, if you take and clean these out really well, you can store uh, flour, um, rice, dry goods of any kind. Um, I've washed them out really well. Um, you know, you will have a coffee smell, but if you wash them really good and let them dry out really well before you put anything in there that's going to be edible or anything for that matter. Um, you know, you do get a really good seal, and then once again on these, you can also take and put a piece of uh, uh, plastic over the top and seal that up. And these would be great for any type of storing uh, anything. Um, you know, if people have ideas and stuff, throw it in the comment below. You know, we're all in this boat together. Water jugs. Now these things are great to, to reuse, you know, they do take up a lot of space. Uh, we get bottled water for using in our coffee maker and our Keurig. And, um, but you know, when, uh, once uh, hurricane season rolls around, I store a bunch of these. Um, I put them, put them up in the closet. I let them dry out really good. And then if a storm's coming, I will take and um, fill these all full of water and uh, put them wherever I can around the house to make sure that I have plenty of water. Um, you can also, <clears throat> if you have big coolers, I mean I have some huge coolers, so what I do is, is I'll take these, I'll fill it up to right about right here, and I'll set it into the freezer, you know, and let that thing freeze solid, and then once it's all done, and put this inside your cooler, this way when you stack in, if you have, uh, so like if you have kids and stuff and you have milk or juice and stuff like that that needs to stay cold, um, these will all slide right down in there and these will stay solid for at least if your cooler is say inside your house, not out in the sun. These things will stay solid and cold for probably three to four days, if not longer, depending on your situation. Um, <clears throat> they have a lot of different benefits. Uh, if you did have one of these, um, you could take and collapse them down, and if you wanted to put it in your pack, and then you can blow it and blow back to, you know, after you do that a few times, though, you're probably going to get a, uh, it'll probably crinkle on you and start to leak. But if you crush this sucker right down, tape the lid to the side of it so you have it, and if it was an emergency situation where you needed to get some water, uh, uh, from someplace or if you had to say get some gas or something like that you could put it in here to pour into your car or so on and so forth there's so many different uses i just want to show everybody that you know the way that you can uh, reuse a lot of the things the products that we buy on a daily basis
can be reused for multiple things, uh, not just around the house, but for your survival kits, for your camping uh, gear, for your hiking gear. Um, it just keeps going on and on and on. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about some metal tents. Be right back. All right, we're back. Now, <clears throat> I buy these candles. I burn them outside of my uh, uh, back porch and stuff. Uh, they're just your these Coleman candles. They're citronella. Um, they come in a, you know different flavors or smells, I should say. Um, I like the pine scent is the my best. But the cool thing about these is they're really, really nice tents, and they're wooden wicks, so they burn all the way down. I mean, they burn down to nothing. So all I got to do is just pull out that little metal piece that's in the bottom down there. And But what you could reuse these for, uh, you see on a lot of different videos. Uh, I've seen them on TV on survival shows and stuff. Everybody has like these small little Altoid tents and stuff. But you could reuse these for the same thing. Um, you could take... And you could put your cotton swabs in here. You could put your charred cloth in here. Um, you could also take and have uh, wood shavings in here of your uh, fat wood. Um, any type of fire starting um, material that you could use to get a fire going. And this is really pretty sturdy and it seals really tight. Um, I did put water in one and I put the lid on and turn it upside down and um, very little leaked out. So I was pretty impressed with that. It's a pretty good seal. Now you can buy these candles at Walmart, um, at least at my Walmart. I have a super Walmart I go to. Uh, they're $2.88 and I buy them and I save all the tens because uh, eventually what I'm going to do, and when I do it, I'll do a video on it and I'll show you, um, but I'm going to be putting my... Uh, like I said, uh, uh, my cotton balls with petroleum jelly on them, put those in there, maybe with a little bit of uh, uh, shavings and uh, um, maybe a charred cloth. And if these are real lightweight, throw them in your backpacks, your emergency pack, your camping gear, hiking gear, uh, whatever. Uh, especially you people that like lightweight stuff. Um, weighs nothing, you know, and you can get a lot of product in there. Uh, the difference between this and an Altoid can is uh, more product. Um, so if it was more of a, a longer uh, survival period that you were dealing with, um, you know, you definitely get more product into these than you do in the little Altoid cans. They are a, it's a lot smaller. They're a thin line, you know, and, you know, fit into your packs probably a little bit different. But if you just had one of these, you know, you're getting probably three times as much product into one of these than you do in an Altoid can. All right, uh, real quick, we're going to talk about some cardboard. Everybody gets cardboard. We all order from Amazon and Walmart and everybody else. Uh, you know, from Macy's and everything, you get cardboard. All right. Cardboard, <clears throat> you know, it'd be, you know, you can use as a, a fire starter. Obviously, I mean that's just a give me. Um, but if you know if you had a few of these, uh, you can cut them into just different sizes. I just cut a couple small pieces just for demonstration purposes only. But you know if you were in a um, survival situation or you know if you're camping or if you're hiking, you know if you had a couple pieces of cardboard and say um, a, a small trash bag, um, or you know if you had a big green trash bag or whatever. You know, you can put these on the ground and make yourself something to set on to keep you off the ground and keep you dry. You know, you can put these inside the bag, put them on the ground, and it gives you something comfortable to set on instead of setting right on the ground. And also, you know, puts a thermal barrier between you and the ground if it's cold out or, or so on and so forth. Uh, like I said, you can also use them as fire starters. Um, and depending on what size you cut these in, you know, they don't really weigh anything. And, uh, you know, you could... I'm, Pretty sure you could find room in your pack for you know something of this nature uh, this way here you're kind of recycling and uh, uh, you know reusing what um, basically you already bought and paid for uh, you know because they ship the box to you you know even if you have Amazon Prime 
uh, you still pay your yearly membership fee and it's costing you to have the stuff shipped to you. So you might as well try to reuse some of the products. Um, you could, uh, like I said, you you know, take with a, a plastic bag and, and you have a, a pad of some sort. Uh, you can buy, I have a, a, a seating pad that I had purchased, you know, cost me 30 bucks. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, you could do this and uh, cost you hardly anything. Maybe a buck by the time you're done, you know, with the cardboard and one nice trash bag. All right, so when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about a styrofoam cooler. And I'm sure maybe a lot of you know what I'm talking about when you see it. And let's not forget about the lovely plastic bags that we all get from the grocery store or Walmart. And our nice paper bags. I'd rather have the paper than the plastic. Um, and in some states, they are starting to do away with these. Uh, I believe in my state that is coming up soon. But they are great. You know, if you do have them, save them, recycle them. You know, I mean, if you're going on a camping trip, if you're going hiking, survival, whatever, they're great to carry things in. If you had to carry supplies in them, um, you can put them in your pockets if you're going to go out and uh, go foraging for food as far as mushrooms and berries and, and uh, maybe some greens of some kind. Uh, paper bags are great for basically the same thing, uh, but also for trying to get a fire started. And if the ground is not wet, it would give you a little bit of a barrier if you wanted to set on it. Um, but uh, yeah, just don't forget about these couple of things. Probably knows and has heard of and probably has had one of these delivered Omaha steaks these coolers are amazing you know you go to the dollar store and you buy coolers and you know you pay what you know between five and seven bucks if you get them at the store and you're heading out and you know you're going uh, to the beach you're going camping whatever uh, you know I use these things all the time. When I lived up north and was camping and out in the woods, um, we stored food and supplies in these things for years. Same cooler, and we never had a problem. Didn't matter if it got wet, no, nothing penetrated it. Didn't have a problem with animals getting in it. Um, but they are universal. I mean, you can use these as emergency supply for water if it's a hurricane um, or you're worried about the power going out and you're, you have a well. Um, you can store all, any type of dry goods in here. We used to store breads, um, <clears throat> you know, chips, crackers, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, you put them inside the styrofoam cooler and you take and, and uh, you know, the lids, as you can see, they have a nice ridge where they go right in and they lock right into place. And once that seals, you know, uh, if you wanted to, uh, you could take and tie a rope around this. You know, if you're worried about the lid coming off or you're gonna put it in the back of your pickup truck or whatever, uh, you know, tie, tie a rope around it to hold it on or, or duct tape it on, you know. Uh, <clears throat> something else, they come wrapped in plastic. Now, I was talking about using the, the cardboard here, you know, and, you know, these things come wrapped in plastic, so instead of throwing the plastic out, you have a, you know, pretty good sized piece of plastic just to give you an idea what I'm talking about, you know, if you took that. Put that in there. Over this all up. And that's here's a pretty good size. And you can tape it up, whatever, you know. But, depending on what size, you just reuse the plastic off of the Omaha steaks. And now you have something to set on and it didn't cost you any money, you know, throw a, piece, a couple pieces of tape around it and it's good to go. You know, you could fold up the, you know, all that together and put it in your pack and uh, lightweight and you're, you're really good to go. So, on that, one other thing I wanted to talk about <clears throat> for 
anybody out there that doesn't know, these are called clothes pins. And everybody's so used to throwing things into the dryer and everything else. Uh, these clothes pins come in handy for a lot of different things besides hanging clothes. Now, I do carry these in my packs. Uh, the reason I do carry them in my packs is because, you know, if something happens and you get wet, something gets wet or anything else and you're able to put on dry clothes, um, you can take some of your bank line or just your regular string would be fine. That would hold, you know, run your little small clothes line, you know, hang your clothes up, get them close to the fire so they're dry, especially like your socks. You don't want to have walk around with wet socks on and wet boots, you know. <clears throat> you can use them to help hold things. You know, now they're, they're not that strong where they're going to hold, you know, 10, 15 pounds, but you know, if you needed to clip on to your tarp to hold something um, or whatever, uh, you know, they, they're universal. They, they'll help hold things together and uh, you know, save you out a tight spot. You know, these you could also take and, you know, if you tape off the end and <clears throat> they will go together like this, you can slide them into there. See how many I can get in here. Just gonna have to move them around a little. And there, look at that. Six close pins inside. Cap both ends off, and you know, you're good to go. You know, you might get one or two that get stuck, but. You get the four, you know, it's right there. Just needs a little finessing. Five clothespins, excuse me. So there's five clothespins that you can put right inside that that goes right into your pack. All right, we'll be right back with one more thing. Okay, so in today's video, we learned how to use uh, recyclables and to use them to benefit us and to um, we can incorporate these things into our daily lives, into our survival packs. Um, you could, you can, can incorporate this stuff into your own uh, garage uh, to make things easier. Um, you know, for your camping trips, your hiking trips. Um, a lot of this stuff is all really lightweight. So, for anybody out there that's uh, big on weight. Uh, they don't like carrying a lot of weight. Some of these ideas may be really good for you. Um, just to give you some demonstrations on different things and everything else. And if people have uh, any comments about any of the little projects and everything, please leave them in the comments below. Um, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.